Two rectangles and a square changed the world forever. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Since Pong was first released to homes in 1975, people began to love and appreciate video games and the revolution. Indeed, look in your pocket right now, and I wager you'll have a fully-fledged gaming device in there in the form of your mobile phone. Video games are a relatively new medium, which means it's still evolving, and in light of the newest craze of virtual reality, this radio piece is to look back at video gaming and some of the evolutions that have occurred throughout its relatively short lifespan, and whether all this innovation is helping or hurting the game industry. Press start to begin. Gaming has had to innovate because, compared to other forms of entertainment, it's still practically at its infancy. The biggest evolution in the home console market came from the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985. The NES not only saved the entire industry from an overly saturated market and a crash, but it brought gaming to the masses with interchangeable games. Before the NES, you'd have to buy a whole new console for a different game. Not so with the NES, an innovation that stood the test of time. Of course, there are many innovations that don't stick around. Professional gaming YouTuber Teal Bald, whose YouTube account Teal Game Master has amassed nearly 50,000 subscribers, had this to say. Yeah, it, some things work, some things don't. Like Dreamcast, actually, that was, that's a good console. It has really good merit. It was just at a time when two juggernauts were competing and the Dreamcast just couldn't get a word in. It was a shame. Um, and in something that wasn't really selling, such as the Dreamcast, um, because not enough big names were going to it, it's too much of a risk. And that was probably its downfall, the fact that it was the first of its kind in, and people weren't willing to take that risk. Sometimes innovation isn't all it's cracked up to be. But sometimes it can cement your place in the industry forever. The Sony PlayStation, released in 1994, was a console all about these innovations. It was the first mainstream system to utilize CD-based games, meaning games were bigger, better, and could do a lot more compared to cartridge-based games. People chalk the 3D up to being the biggest innovation of games ever. When asked, what do you think is the most important or most significant innovation to gaming ever? Teal also said, I'd say 3D, maybe, because okay. that's just opened the floodgates to anything, really. It used expandable, removable storage for its games, meaning you could save, take your memory card to your friend's house and play the game there too, just where you left off. But the biggest innovation, to me, is dual analog sticks, which were released in 1998 after adapting the single analog stick. But for that, we need to look to Sony's competitor. It's me, Mario. Indeed, Nintendo couldn't stay complacent, and in 1996 released the world's first analog stick and the world's first true 3D platformer, Super Mario 64. No more were you limited to only eight directions when playing a game. This single control mode made it possible for people to sneak, walk, or run in-game based on how much you move the stick. Analog controls are an innovation that still exists today, and we have both Nintendo and Sony to thank for the control system we have now. I reached out to gaming journalist and internet personality Jim Sterling, whose YouTube video series about the state of the gaming industry amasses him over $10,000 a month in donations from fans. While he was unavailable for an interview, he provided a statement, saying, I'm not against innovation. However, the way some people talk about it, I feel wandering too much into the territory of innovation for innovation's sake. Doing new things without regard for whether they make for an entertaining game. It's something that many of us, I feel, encourage. Essentially, innovation is placed at a higher echelon than quality, and that's something I feel is far more reckless than not innovating at all. I'm all for innovation, but only when it's called for. Innovating for no other reason than to be innovative is a bad idea, and leads to shoddy implementation of poor ideas. It seems our big gaming personalities are agreed. Innovation is not always a good idea. I asked a selection of people, including members of the Bangor University Gaming League, what their favourite consoles were. I got a myriad of responses, but one of the most popular paves the way for my next innovation. 
What's your favorite video game console? Mine would have to be the Wii. The Wii? <laughs> Nintendo Wii. Indeed, Nintendo can't seem to sit still, and in 2006, they provided us with a whole new way to play games. Like, a lot of people scoffed at the Nintendo Wii, thinking, that's never going to catch on, and then it's, it was just a huge system seller. Sure, there existed peripherals before the Wii, which allowed people to play with other types of controllers, but never before was a whole system created with motion controls in mind. I just really love that controller, it's so much easier to use. To play tennis, swing your arm as if you're holding a racket. To play golf, swing your arms as if you're actually playing golf. A control system massively simple and understandable, the Wii introduced video gaming to a whole new audience and made gaming more accessible to more people. Motion controls are still active today, with both Sony and Microsoft releasing their own variations, and motion controls being adapted into virtual reality. But it's clear that this unrepeatable success of the Wii showed that some innovations are impossible to replicate. But the real question is, when do we stop? The figures speak for themselves, and 0.33% of PC gamers own virtual reality headsets. That's less than half of 1%. Is this an innovation, or is it just a fad? Only time will tell, but I certainly hope these VR companies have the foresight to think about the future of this innovation. To bring this conversation to a conclusion, however, I'd like to defer you to the largest selling console of all time, the PlayStation 2. My favourite console is the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2. PS2. Definitely the PlayStation 2. What did the PlayStation 2 have that no other console had at the time? Uh, it used DVDs instead of CDs, so you could watch movies on it? And, uh, that's about it. The PS2 was, by no means, an innovative console. And that was its biggest selling point. The PS2 sold around 155 million units and had more games than any other system at the time. It was simple, it was understandable, it was perfect. Developers found it easy to make games for, and consumers found it easy to play games on. A generally standard and unremarkable console, which was the biggest selling in the entire world. Indeed, looking towards independent gaming is another sign that, for some people, innovation isn't as important as refining old mechanics. Like independent films, creating video games can be done by one person on a shoestring budget. And some of the highest rated indie games, like say, Castle Crashes, Braid, Super Meat Boy, Fez and Shovel Knight, are created by small teams purposefully evoking art styles and gameplay mechanics from years ago, sometimes even decades. Why? Because sometimes, you can't improve on perfection. Innovation is not the be-all and end-all, and, as evidenced by indie games in the PlayStation 2, you don't have to innovate to be successful. Whether virtual reality will become the next big thing that these developers seem to think it will be has yet to be seen, and I wish developers taking that risk all the best. But to go back to my interview with Teal, I asked, is it right to look for innovation by looking to our past or should we look to innovation's future? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, you should do both. Sometimes the new doesn't work and going back to the old days is a, is a creative, fresh way of bringing about more in, in innovation. Sometimes, to see the future, we have to look to the past. Thanks to the people who participated in this discussion, and thanks to you all for listening. Game over. <laughs>